So we've enjoyed using this Razer Blade 17 that we've recently reviewed, and whilst we're waiting for the 13th generation laptops to arrive, we've decided to put together an all Razer desk setup to see how it performs in day-to-day -day use and to see if it's worth the premium of the Razer Tax. Setting up this Razer desk setup was pretty straightforward. We've decided to use a large white desk to provide some contrast to the black Razer products. And we also used a light blue mouse mat rather than a black for the same reason. The focal pieces of this setup were the Razer laptop, a Razer monitor, so we made sure we wired those up first before we added the headset, the keyboard, and the mouse, and of course, a couple of small succulent plants to prove that I'm a YouTuber. And as I mentioned earlier, the laptop that we used was the 2022 Razer Blade 17 with an i9 processor, the 3080 Ti, and a beautiful 4K screen. Now, in case you missed the review, I'm gonna put a link in the description down below, as well as links to the, all the other reviews of the other Razer products in this video that we released on our MASH Extra channel. And this laptop has an insane price tag of £4,500 in the UK, and I cannot recommend it at that price, especially with the Blade 16 and Blade 18 at a pre-order stage at the moment. But with that Blade 16 and Blade 18 coming out, I think we're gonna see some great price reduction on the older Blade 15 and 17 models. And this 17 could be a great product to pick up at a reduced price if you can't afford for the new 16 or 18 models. So when choosing the monitor, we didn't really have a lot of choice. Razer only make one actual monitor, which is the Razer Raptor 27 inch QHD 165 Hertz monitor. And it is a great monitor with a beautiful design, a lovely RGB stand, a unique cable managed green Razer cable setup. But as with all Razer products, it's incredibly expensive. It's $799 retail price. But as always, check out Amazon and your other local retailers. You can often pick this up at a discounted price. Now the panel does look great with its P3 color gamma and its HDR support. But unfortunately with only 350 nits, it's not gonna beat your fancy OLED TV for HDR content. I also love the fact that the actual monitor screen can flip up, giving you easy access to the great port selection. And it comes with unusual green razor cables that are neatly cable managed down the back of the panel for a very clean looking design. Now having a USB-C port and USB-A downstream ports mean that I can easily connect this to my Razer Blade 17 with one cable and give it access to the screen, a keyboard and a mouse, which is something I really wanted from my monitor. So next I wanted to stand to lift my actual Razer Blade 17 up so I've opted for the Razer Chroma V2 laptop stand. Now this is an expensive laptop stand, but it does come with an array of features, such as an HDMI and a USB-C out port for display, two USB-A ports for your peripherals, and the USB-C that will go back into the laptop to pass that connection through. And as well as all of that, the laptop is sturdy, well-made, with a beautiful RGB strip along the bottom. And so it should be, because as with all Razer products, it costs an expensive, eye-watering $150 for a laptop stand. But I think you agree with the look of this stand with the laptop, it's a no-brainer in this setup. Now moving on to the other side of the desk, I wanted a headset stand to stop me dumping my headset on the desk when I finished using it. An elegant, well-built headset stand that also provides two USB-A down ports, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and a built-in audio DAC. And obviously being Razer, the bottom is a lovely RGB strip, which looks fantastic with the rest of my setup but as it should do for $70 for this headset stand. The base station is holding my old Razer Nari headset solidly, and these are some heavy headphones. Now my Nari's have been in service for over a year, and I absolutely love this headset. They feel comfortable, they have good battery life, and I can adjust the chat volume and the game sound effects independently, so I can chat with my friends while not missing any of the important game sound effects at the same time. For the keyboard, I've gone for the Razer Black Widow V3 Mini because it's nice and light, so I can chuck it in the bag with a laptop if I want to travel with it. It's wireless, it has great RGB, and I love the red switches for gaming. And although it has an RRP of $180, which is incredibly expensive, you can often find this one for just over $100 on Amazon. And for the mouse, I've chosen the Razer Viper Ultimate with a charging dock. Now I've tried a lot of the Razer mice. I love the Death Adder, and I love the Viper. I find these two mice are great comfortable mice, accurate, light, and just great for my grip play style. Now I've chosen the Viper Ultimate because I'm the most accurate with the Viper over my two favorite Viper and Death Adders. And also I love the fact that it's got the base station so I can put my Viper mouse on the base station when I finish playing and I never have to worry about the battery life. And like the keyboard, this has got a very high RRP of $150, but if you check out your local retailer or Amazon, you can often pick this one up for about $100 or less. And the final piece of the puzzle, my Razer chair. 
Now I've had this for a couple of years. You've probably seen it in the background on the channel. Absolutely love this chair. It's had up really well. And it's the last piece of my Razer setup. Okay, so we've talked about all the products on this desk and my desk setup. But now we're gonna talk about the one thing that holds all of these products together, and that is the Razer sign up software. Now, whenever you're buying a laptop, you do always have to have the inbuilt software that controls the lighting on the laptop and the settings. But the thing I love about the Razer Synapse is that one piece of software that you get on your laptop here controls all of their peripherals, monitors, docks, headphones, everything. And it gives you one place to synchronize all of the lighting and settings with ease. Now, yes, it can be a little bit clunky, but as you can see here, with all of my peripherals plugged in, they're all showing up in a nice neat line at the top where I can click on any one of these devices and adjust its settings. Another thing I like is at a glance, it shows me all the battery life of my wireless peripherals. And that is really handy. So I can basically see if I need to plug anything in and charge it. And at any point I can click on one of these devices and very quickly change the actual colors to something that suits my actual layout. Now, as you can see, I'm using the wave effect here on all these peripherals. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic. There are a load of inbuilt effects from breathing, fire, spectrum cycling, loads of different inbuilt effects you can use. Or you can click the advanced effect, go into Chroma Studio and change any one of these lighting keys, strips, bars to your preference. Now that does take quite a bit of setting up, but if you have a very specific plan in mind for all your colors, for all these peripherals, it can be done. Me personally, I'm quite lazy. I really love either the fire or the wave effect and it instantly synchronizes up to all my devices. Another feature that I really like is because I've got the Razer Raptor monitor, very often when you've got a monitor, you've got a clunky button interface to go through all the menus and it can be quite slow to change any of the settings. But with the Razer Raptor, you can control all of those features within the signup software. Not only can you adjust the actual lighting bar that goes right around the actual monitor itself, but we can actually change the brightness and all the settings for the monitor itself within this software. And that's a feature that I do really appreciate. Now, the only thing that I do think is a bit of a shame Razer have an incredible amount of keyboards and mice and headphones and other peripherals, but they do only have one monitor, which is this 27 inch Razer Raptor. And although it is a good monitor, it isn't the fastest on the market. It's 165 Hertz, but it still isn't the fastest 165 Hertz. And you can also get anything up to 500 Hertz monitors now. But for me personally, I'll take the convenience of having a USB-C adapter to my laptop and being able to adjust all of those settings within signups for this monitor over a slightly faster monitor, because in day-to-day -day use, I find this is an absolutely fantastic monitor to use. Okay, so sign-up software out of the way. How is it actually like using this setup? And I have to be honest, this has been absolutely fantastic. Now, Razer is very expensive. You are paying a Razer tax for their peripherals and their laptops. Everything's very expensive, but it is incredibly premium. Now, I've plugged in my 17-inch 2022 Razer Blade that I've recently reviewed. I've been absolutely loving this laptop and with one cable and the power supply all of my peripherals come to life and I do absolutely love that. I've basically got the extended screen so I have my laptop screen just off to the side which can be useful. I've very often got my task manager or MSI Afterburner running and that is very handy. So I may have a game running on my left screen, some work on my left screen and then my stats on the right. Very handy. So there we go, that's our all Razer desk setup. It's taken us a while to get all these pieces in to make the setup but I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I absolutely love using this setup. I'm loving this Razor Blade 17. And I know we've got the uh, new 16 and 18 inch Razor Blades on the way, but this is certainly tidying me over in my day-to-day -day use. So we also deal with a lot of Alienware on this channel as well. So we will also be putting together an all Alienware gaming setup. So make sure you're subscribed if you're not already, because there'll be videos on that coming out soon. And as usual, I'd love to know your opinions on this setup. Do you think this is worth the Razor tax to put something like this together? It was very expensive, but is it worth it? Let us know in the comment section down below and I will get back to you. And lastly, thanks for watching.